Pelvic inflammatory disease is an ascending infection of the female reproductive tract. In terms of assessments, you can do bedside tests, bloods and imaging. So at the bedside, a bimanual examination is quite useful because you may be able to uh, detect a degree of cervical um, excitation. An endocervical swab is important for detecting various sexually transmitted infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea, which are the most, most common causes of pelvic inflammatory disease. And a high vaginal swab is done to test for anaerobes. The bloods that are done are the same as for any infectious condition, really. So FBC, CRP and blood culture are, are very important. And finally, a transvaginal ultrasound scan would be required uh, to check whether the patient has developed a tubo ovarian abscess. The first line management option is a combination of three antibiotics. So keftriaxone, an IM dose is given STAT, and then it's followed by a 14-day course of doxycycline and metronidazole. There's an alternative in patients who are penicillin allergic, so ofloxacin and metronidazole can be given for 14 days to avoid giving keftriaxone. And there's a few other things to bear in mind as well. So if someone has an intrauterine device, they are at increased risk of developing PID. And that's partly due to the fact that people with intrauterine devices uh, tend to use barrier protection less often. A full STI screen should also be offered and contact tracing as well if it's found to be due to a sexually transmitted infection. PID does carry an increased risk of reduced fertility going forward, so it's important to have that conversation with the patient early on.